What is up YouTube? Today we're going to be talking temperature controllers. So we've got here an STC 1000, really popular amongst brewers for temperature control during fermentation, all sorts of other stuff as well, but we're mainly going to be focused on brewing today. So for this project you're going to need an STC 1000 temperature controller. They're readily available on eBay and Amazon, I'll try and get a link uh, below cost probably about 10 US dollars. You also need a project enclosure for this. It doesn't necessarily need to be waterproof but the better seal you can get around the temperature controller the better. You'll also probably need a few loose wires and connectors. I'll talk you through those as we go. So all I've done here is to mark up the cutout that we need for the face of the temperature controller. Now it's important to note that you don't want to cut out the actual size of the face. You want to cut out the size of the main body. In this particular case, I found that uh, 70 by 28 millimeters worked perfectly. Now most of these are the same size. It should uh, have some information in the packaging with the product, but it's always worth a double check before you cut into it. We're then simply gonna Dremel out an opening in the face of the project box. The rear of the case needs a few different openings for cables. You will need one small one for the temperature probe, two larger outlets, for the temperature and cooling circuits and also a fourth for the power in. Now I'm going to assemble the STC without using the case. The best way of doing this is to put the actual controller outside the box, pull the cables through from the rear of the STC into the main project case and then these can come out the back via the holes that uh, you've drilled. Once you're done you can simply pull the cables back through and the STC will fall into the box. For the purposes of this video though, it's much simpler not to show the box at all. So just bear in mind that when you are assembling it, the cables will be running through the back of the box into your STC. So the first connection we're going to make is for the temperature control cable. This is the black wire that comes with the temperature control unit. It's a simple two wire connection. Now the back of the STC itself, along the bottom, will have all the connectors. Normally on the top there is a sticker showing you numbers one to eight. These obviously correspond with the connection ports on the bottom of the STC. So as you can see from this sticker, our temperature sensor is gonna connect into numbers three and four. It doesn't matter which way around it goes, just as long as it is connected well into those two ports. On screen, there's a schematic showing you how this is connected. I'll put some links below to my Dropbox. So next up, we're gonna be wiring our power into the unit. Now I live in the UK, so we're using a standard three pin socket that includes the earth. This is the basic way you can wire it up. We're actually gonna do something a little bit more advanced and split the power supply. This just saves you having separate power supplies for your fridge and your heater. The easiest way to do that is with chocolate blocks, as shown here. You can buy these for just a pound or so in any hardware store. And what we're aiming to do is to split the brown cable into three separate wires. Once these have been split, we need to connect them into the back of the STC. These go into ports one, five, and seven. Next up, we're gonna connect our earth. This is the simplest bit of the wiring. We're just gonna connect the greens from the power supply, the heating and the cooling circuit together. None of these go via the STC. You can just connect them all together directly. Next up, we want to connect our blue cables together. So again, we're gonna split this three different ways. One is port two. One is gonna provide a neutral for your heating circuit and one is gonna provide a neutral for your cooling circuit. Now you'll notice that I'm wiring up a three pin socket for my heating and cooling circuits. You don't need to do this, you can hardwire the fridge and the heating element in so you have no connections outside the control box. The reason I do this is quite useful sometimes to add extras and by putting a socket in, I can simply clip in a fan inside the fridge. Finally, we're gonna run a live cable from our heating element to port six, and from our cooling element to port eight. And with those last two cables installed, I'm happy to say all the wiring is now complete. All that leads to do is to plug the unit in and test it. 
for the purposes of the testing, I have put the STC back within the project box just to give a bit more security and safety. As you can see here, holding the temperature probe and then releasing it shows that the temperature sensor is picking up an increase in heat and then a decrease afterwards. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the like button below. Coming up next week, I'll do a quick two minute guide on how to use an STC 1000. If you want to see that, please hit the subscribe button.